Hi guys, welcome back to the channel, FMPino here, and guess what, we're doing a new save, it's a new series, it's Into Miami, and hey, it's pretty obvious why I'm doing it, Into Miami uh, play their first league, well their first ever professional football game this uh, this weekend, so it sparked my interest a little bit, I was thinking, hmm, that could be an interesting save, then I remembered that I know zilch about the MLS and the rules. So I've been away, I've done a bit of research. Um, I've also, in this video, going to do a very, very quick guide. Try not to bore you guys too much, but you can skip it if you like, if you already know the rules or whatnot. But I think it's quite good to watch because not only does it help me know what's going on in the rules and don't mess up this season too much, but it also helps you guys follow the, the journey and follow the save, hopefully, and yourselves know what's going on and kind of helps understand why I'm making the certain decisions in the game and whatnot. But yeah, it's going to be an interesting save. Um, let's, uh, let's get into the guide. Okay, so here is my quick guide to the MLS. And look at this little fancy PowerPoint presentation I've done here, eh? Yeah, I don't, don't expect too much. Uh, not much creativity has gone into this, but we'll get, we'll get into it. So... First off, the league format. Obviously, that's a little bit different to a lot of European leagues. You've got your two conferences, your West and your East, with us into Miami in the East Conference because geographically, we're from the East side of uh, the United States and that's how it's split up. 34 matches in a league season. You play every team in your conference twice, but you only play 10 teams from the opposite conference. So those, there'll be three teams from the opposite conference who we won't be playing. The MLS Supporters Shield. There it is, lovely little shield there. This is your kind of your combined total of all 34 games, so all the points from 34 games combined into one league table. The winner of this giant combined league table gets automatic entry into the Confederation of the North, Central America and Caribbean Champions League, the CONCACAF. So that is your equivalent to your Champions, European Champions League. So you play te the, well, the top teams from... North America, Central America, and the Caribbean. The MLS Cup, this is your playoffs system from each conference. So as you can see in the graphic at the bottom, the champions of the conference are automatically put through to the semi-final of their playoff. Second to seventh all advance to the wild card round. And the final is the two teams who won each side of their conference playoff. So the champion of the West side versus the champion of the East playoff in the MLS Cup final and the winner of this again qualifies for the CONCACAF Champions League. Next up is your Lamar Hunt US Open Cup which is your equivalent to the English FA Cup so all domestic professional, semi-professional and amateur teams take part in this and again the winner qualifies for the CONCACAF Champions League. Right now squad breakdown this is a will say the most important part and the reason why I've done this uh, video is kind of help us out with getting the roster correct and understanding the rules of squad registration. So you've got your two squad categories in the MLS. You've got your senior squad and your off-budget squad. Senior squad is your slots 1 to 20. They count against salary cap with the 2020 MLS salary cap being set at £275,000 per month done it in pounds and done it monthly because that's how I always play football managers. So it's easy for me to kind of compare to normal wages and understand it better really. Off budget squad, that is your slots 21 to 30. They don't count against your salary cap. And these all consist of different contract types. So in your senior squad, you've got your designated player. They're your kind of, we'll go into this in more detail, but they're your, like your David Beckhams, your Kakas, your Rooneys. Then you've got your senior contract players, your SMS, which is your senior minimum salary players, and then off-budget squad, reserve contracts. These are maximum of six you can have, and no more than four non-homegrown reserve players. But also, as you can see in the senior squad and the off-budget squad, you have SMS players. So the reason for this is because if players not in the first 20 slots will be off-budget and not count towards salary cap. So you've got a full 1 to 20 slots basically filled in if you get any sms players after that they will then go into slots 21 to 30 and count as off budget and not go towards the calorie slot cap and then you've got generate generation adidas contract so 
we'll go into more detail about. So now on to designated players. So you have, you start off with two and the option to buy a third for 116,000. And you have three types. You've got your standard designated player. These are your over 24 years of age. These are your kind of big players, big boys like Rooney. And uh, these have a salary cap impact of £34,500. Or if they sign halfway through the season, it's half that at 17250 So basically, this works as if you have a designated player and his contract is, I don't know, say 100000 a week, 100000 a month, should I say, only 34500 of that will go towards your salary cap because they're a designated player and the rest of it will be paid by the club. So that's kind of how you get like get around having designated players on big wages but not obviously affecting your salary cap. So young designated players, 21 to 23, these have a cap impact of 13000 and 9750 if signed halfway through in July and then 20 or younger, Sorry, cap impact of 9,750. Then your senior contract players, these are your like your main sort of chunk of your your roster. These have a salary from ranging from 4,500 to 34,500. Their entire salary will count against the cap. So obviously this is kind of where you've got to watch out and not get over the cap because if you're paying up some of these senior contract players on 30,000 a week, you're already very quickly going to go over the cap but you can use general allocation money to buy down these contracts to lower the uh, the effect against the cap really so senior minimum salary that's your sms contracts they are always have a salary of 4500 a month uh, if a sms contract player is in your first 20 slots their full wage will count towards the salary cap however if the uh, if they occupy if all those slots are taken up and they occupy a 21 to 30 slot They'll be on your off-budget squad and therefore not count towards the cap. So that's quite interesting. Reserve contracts. So these must be under 25 years old and they always have a salary of 3,600. Maximum of six and you have a, in that six, you've got a maximum of four non-homegrown players. Reserve players will always occupy the off-budget squad and therefore not count towards your salary cap. Generation Adidas contracts. So these are... In your super draft, which are your graduates, like college graduates coming coming up um, into the super draft, so you get a choice of who to take. 12 of them will be given a status of Generation Adidas, which means the ones that have been given that status, they will not count towards the salary cap. So if you can pick up one of these these Generation Adidas players, you can get a good player, but not, not only that, they will not count towards your salary cap. And... But eventually, they will no longer be a Generation Adidas player and will count. So international players, you start with eight international slots. So if we started fresh, the MLS now, every team would have eight international slots. However, these slots can be traded and have been traded in the past. So not everyone will have eight. So as into Miami, we will start with eight. Um, that's just what all like the teams start with. But I could trade to get more slots. So say I wanted... Uh, international slot off LA Galaxy I would maybe offer them a player for an international slot I get one of the slots then I have therefore nine international slots and they get the player I traded so obviously international players are quite important because I hope Americans don't mind me saying but the American sort of standard at the moment isn't so great their international team isn't doing that well so it's fairly important to get a few international slots and get some international players in right so here is a sample squad. I think this is a good way of looking at it because I don't know if like me, I'm a quite a visual learner and I like to see see stuff like this. So you can see there, the, as in the sample squad here, 1 to 20 are all in the senior squad. So they all count towards your salary cap with 21 to 30 are part of the off-budget squad and therefore do not. So you, and then the young designated player there in slot 3, he doesn't count as a third designated player because he's a young one. So Technically, in this sample squad, I've got two designated players. I could buy a third, still get a third designated player, and have a young designated player as well. Eight international slots in this in this squad. Again, could have more or less if, if you choose to trade them. And a max of six reserve players and max four non-homegrown. And then if you look, this is where kind of it's easy to see the senior man minimum salary player. So you can see 19, slot 19 and 20, those 
SMS players count towards the cap, but once that's been filled up, the ones in slots 22, 23, 24, they know they're now part of the off-budget squad and no and do not count towards your salary cap. Right, so transfers and drafts. So the MLS Super Draft, that is the one I was talking about earlier. You've got your college graduates who who are basically being offered up to the MLS teams. Four rounds. Teams could pass at any time, but if you do pass, it means you'll no longer be able to pick in any of the other rounds. The draft happens every year. So it's good to um for the super draft, it's good to kind of get a get a good first pick, which I believe as Inter Miami manager, I will have what first pick or second pick. I have a or Nashville who are another expansion team. So it's good to kind of have that pick because you can get the best players, best youngish players coming up through the system. MLS re-entry draft. This is where players whose contract has run out and can be selected by other MLS teams for free. So these are kind of players who've not been offered contracts by their teams and obviously then are entered into this draft for other teams to pick them. If you do pick a player from this draft, you will have this, they'll have the same contract which they had previously. So you pick up their contract and pay them the same, the same sort of details and everything. If you've let a player go, you cannot then pick him up again in the in the draft. And again, that happens every year. Expansion draft. Now, this is the interesting one. So this only happens when you have new teams joining the league. So for us in Nashville, it's um, we're joining the league this year. So we get to take part in the expansion draft. And basically what happens is all the existing teams in the league protect 11 players. So those 11 players are exempt from being in the draft. But then all the rest of their, their roster are, let's say, up for grabs. So I can then go and pick a LA Galaxy player who they've not protected in the draft and take him. But then once I've had that LA Galaxy player, all of um, LA Galaxy's rest of their players are then removed from the draft and can no longer be picked. So you can't just go and pick five players from one team. It kind of protects them that way. So that this is interesting. It's kind of, it's, some could say it's quite harsh on the existing teams because they lose players without even having an option. You just they're just getting stolen off them almost. But it also helps the new teams coming in get some real pros in and makes it a lot more competitive for them. So MLS trading. So it's trading in the MLS is a little bit different. Um it's this is kind of trading like within teams within the MLS, not like foreign transfers. So you have general allocation money. This is kind of money given to each team. I think you get more as a, as an expansion team. So this is money like, I think it's kind of given out at the start of the season and you can use it to either buy players, reduce the cost of senior players' caps um, or just trade with other teams and like new contracts. So targeted allocated money, this is can be used to trade to other teams, convert a designated player to a non-designated player. So that could be important. You can then free up a designated player slot and obviously have more high quality players. You can offer obviously your current roster players. So that's just trading player for player. International slots, as I said before, you can trade those. And um, player rights. So players that have been sold out of the MLS and not traded remain the right of the last MLS club they played for before they left. These rights can last until when their contract would have expired or permanently. And then you've got draft picks. So obviously we're, like I said before, being into Miami and us having maybe the first or second pick in the, in the super draft, other teams will want that because they want that option to pick up the best players coming through the system. So they might offer you a good, one of their good players for the chance of them having a a super draft pick early, early doors to get the better players. So it's, it's interesting. Like as you can see, I've rushed through that a little bit, um, just because I don't want to bore you guys. I want to get into the save, but I thought it's quite interesting to see um, see the different rules, try and learn them. We'll, we'll we'll learn them as we go along as well, obviously, and I will explain some, some of my decisions as I'm going through it. But I thought do a little guide so we're all on the same sort of wavelength and we can understand what's going on. But yeah, so now let's get into the save. Welcome to Miami, Buena Vida, a Miami. Welcome to the new series, Into Miami. Didn't know that's what the words of that song was. I always thought it was like, welcome to Miami, Ami, 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 Ami. But no, we've learned something, uh, we've learned something new today. But yeah, welcome to the save. Um, 
as I said earlier, it's a new challenge for me. Might be a new challenge for you guys as well to follow. So I thought it'd be quite interesting. So obviously we're into Miami, year founded 2018, totally new MLS club, obviously set up by David Beckham and a very rich um, owner, I believe. But yeah, so here we go. Uh, professional status, reputation, three stars, secure finances, um, facilities. So current stadium is the Fort Lauderdale, which we are renting currently. It's an 18,000 seater. We are renting currently as we are due to move into Miami Freedom Park on the 1st of the 2nd, 2022, which has a 25,000 capacity. It's not so bad, not so bad. Uh, top corporate facilities, great training facilities, poor data analysis facilities, and great youth facilities. So, obviously, I've, I'm doing the save. We've had the winter update, so that the winter update actually has all of their current team, current transfers, but I wanted to do it fresh. Wanted to have it where they have to start with no players, so I'm back on the on the old um, on the original the original one. So if you look here, the only players we currently have, Jimmy Mora, I just picked up on a waiver draft, but I realise I don't want him, and he actually goes at the end of this month, so going to get rid of him. So ignore Jimmy for now. David Norman is our first player. He's currently on loan at Pacific FC, Canadian, 21 year old centre mid. Deep line playmaker. Looks all right. He's nothing special, is he? Potentially could get better. Not so sure. He's not really, really too great. Up next is 19 year old Christian McCoon, who's currently on loan at Zamora FC. He looks okay, I think. 19, he's got good stats. Uh, he's kind of a defensive midfielder, defensive, well, center half or a midfielder. But yeah, he looks he looks all right night for nineteen. What previously been at Juventus? Uh, up next is Julian Carranza, striker, nineteen year old, currently on loan at Banfield. Quite like the look of him. Good finishing, first touch, heading, good stats all across the board for a nineteen year old, and potential to get better. And last but not least is Matthias Pellegrini, who I think is the real star so far. We've got. He's only nineteen. What contract is he on? So. He's on a young designated player of the month, so obviously he's on 50,000, but not all of that will be going towards the salary cap. He's under 20 years old, so I can't remember off the top of my head what the numbers are now, but he will be obviously, I think it's something like 9,000 a month or something, he'll only be going towards the salary cap, so he's a good player to have, only 19, look at those stats, good all-rounder, left winger, like the look of him. Okay, so that's current squad. But we are currently at the expansion draft. So this is the draft where um, the two new teams, us in Nashville, get an opportunity to to um, take a few of uh, the other team's players, basically. So I'm not going to go through the draft. I want to just show you what the setup is like. And this is basically the choice of all the players I've got. So I'm not going to go through that with, all you, with you guys because it'd be pretty boring. But yeah, we've got first pick. So I'll... I'll do the draft now and we'll come back and show you what players I managed to get. Right, we've finished the expansion draft there. I'll show you my picks. It was quite tough because obviously there's such a big list of players and it's hard to pick out which ones are good and have the time to go through. But I picked up first Steve Clark, experienced goalkeeper. Three star coaches are saying he's all right. He's don't know if he'll be first choice or not. He's on 8,000 a week, but he looks all right. He's 33, so I wanted to a kind of keeper with a bit of experience. Next up was Joven Jones, who is, oh, one second. So he's on a senior contract, only, of, only. he's on 34,000 a month. So quite a costly one, but I like the look of him attacking fullback, but he can play all across the left side, really. Coaches like him, four and a half star. He's got a bit about him, a bit of flair, a bit of off the ball. Dribbling, very good going forward. Not so great defending, but we'll kind of see where I'm going to play him. I'm not sure if he'd be a left back or a left mid yet. Next up, and I'm glad I got him, was Justin Glad. Hey, eh? uh, 22 year old centre back, American, so doesn't count as an international player. I like the look of him. He's only 22. Coaches seem to like him as well. 22k a week, F fairly decent pace, good attributes for a centre half. I like that. Yeah, I'm quite happy I picked up him. 
Next up was Chris Muller, who I've got on 7,000 a week as a, so he's a senior contract as well. Not too, not too bad, not too expensive. Um, he's a right midfielder, but as you can see, he can play all over the midfield. Really like the look of him. He's still only 23, good determination, lacks a bit of pace and physicality, but makes it up in passing and technique and anticipation 14. So he looks like a decent little midfielder, like the look of him. And then last but not least is Chase Gasper, fullback. Just a, I think I got him on a um, senior minimum salary, so he's only on 4500 and he's American as well. So I thought he'd be a good, decent, possibly backup left back. Not sure whether he'll be good enough to start yet, but yeah, I quite like the look of look of him. So yeah, there's the expansion draft. I'll um, There's a few more drafts coming up, so I'll come back for those as well. Here we are. It's next up, it's the MLS re-entry draft, stage one. So these are players whose contracts have expired in the MLS and are now up for to be redrafted. There is three rounds of for 15 players who are available for selection. We only have the 26th pick of this. So these aren't going to be great players. Obviously, they've been let go by their clubs anyway. So for us to have the 26th pick, we're going to be left with, I think we're going to be left with the Dregs boys. Definitely the Dregs. Yeah, as expected. With the 26th pick, this is what I've been left with. Bonique Garcia. I don't really want to take on any of these if they're internationals as well. And I've only got like another four slots. So yeah, this is the standard of what we're looking at left. I've got to pick. He's all right, but he's not good enough to take up an international slot. So yeah, so I'm, I'm going to pass on that. I'm not going to take any of those boys in. So just didn't think any of them were good enough. The uh, college graduation super draft is coming up soon. And I just wanted to show you that there's been some Generation Adidas players announced. These are the ones, obviously, if you can get these, they don't count towards any of your uh, salary cap. So that if you can pick up these, and there's any good ones, then mm, they're fairly young, like 21. They're coming out of college, American college, which is obviously a bit later. So yeah, that, there's a few of them. Um, when um, when we get to that stage, I will uh, I'll come back and I'll let you know which which players we've got from the super draft. So just looking at the club vision here of what's expected of us in this first season. So the club culture is sign high reputation players. They're already delighted with that. Not sure why you've you've seen the uh, players I've got so far. They're all right. They wouldn't say they're high reputation, but Okay, um, I'll take it, I'll take it. Sign young players for development for profit. Satisfied currently. Yeah, not really sign that anyone really like that. So now the five-year plan. So end of this current season, the Supporters Shield, they just want us to be competitive. That's the uh, that's the league all added up into one, combined into one. So just be competitive in that. Avoid finishing bottom of our conference league. So... Not high expectations in the first league. I guess this is a bit of a building season. So that's kind of coming into mind. Knowing that there's less pressure on where to finish this year, I might look towards more youth players who I can develop and kind of come into their prime for next season and then really challenge. Uh, the Lamar Hunt just reached the fifth round. I'm not sure what, what, what stage we enter in that. But yeah, so that's the club vision. There isn't really um, any sort of pressure in this first season it's not like they're asking us to get into playoffs or anything like that it's basically just be competitive so so yeah so hopefully can get some players in like I said who can maybe just learn their trade this year and then hit their peak for next year and really challenge the MLS player combine started today so this is like you know like the NFL where they have like the certain tests which are uh, well, test the uh, physical strength and speed and jumping, agility and all that. Same for football. So let's have a look at the the uh, results here. So speed test, Ariel Diaz was the fastest with Lewis Newton. He, ooh, he looks all right. Lewis Newton there could be a good player to pick up in the um, Super Draft. All these players are available in the Super Draft to win the 
but the combine kind of gives you a bit of like little tests and stats about them really so he's an interesting one 15 finishing 15 dribbling good pacing behind agility navarro's won that one brian marquis jumping test roger lero center center mid could be six foot three could be an option brian riddle who is six foot eight wow big striker not sure he'll suit the way we're going to play but yeah, they're interesting. It's an interesting way of uh, looking at the players who we can pick from. But yeah, so that's not too far away now. So I'll come back for, for the Super Draft. That's the Super Draft done. Let's see the four players we've got. I didn't get any Generation Adidas players. I thought those, they weren't that great. There was a few better than them. But um, so these will all count towards my salary cap unless they are reserve players. So first in was Kieran Murray. Attacking midfield centre, 21. Um, good stats all over, I think. Good determination, so hopefully he'll improve. My scouts love him. Potential star of four and possibly five. Next up is Newton, who's that striker who won the speed test, or he was up there in the speed test, and I liked the look of him. I liked his dribbling finishing. Just an in-behind striker, and always dangerous, aren't they? Again, good... Um, Good scout reports as well. Then it was Robertson. I was been looking for a right back, so he's not obviously going to be a starting right back. He's okay, thirteen tackling, but as backup, I thought he'd be okay. And it's his potential as well is pretty good. So maybe in a couple of years he'll be my starting right back. But for now, not a bad backup option. And who was Scott? Who was actually my first pick? Was is this centre half? He's a bit of a ball playing centre half. He's got passing 13, tackling 15, first touch 13. Not slow either, 13 um, pace. He's not the biggest, 5 foot 11, but his jumping's all right. A bit of a ball playing centre half. I love his bravery, determination, leadership, teamwork. Got a good head on him, so hopefully he'll turn into top centre half. So that's the four I got in. Let's keep the journey going. Oh, the roster is done. Wow. Wow, wow, wow. That was probably one of the most difficult transfer <laughs> windows I've ever had on Football Manager. My brain is pretty much melted at this point. It was a lot more difficult than I was expecting because obviously I started with bare bones. So I had to make a full squad. To stay under the salary cap was a lot more difficult than I expected. I don't think I've got enough players, first off. I don't think I've got enough quality, second of all. But we'll we'll go through now and you can, uh, you can make a decision yourselves, but I'm not feeling too confident for this first season. No, 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 no. Very difficult. So let's start off with the, uh, we'll go through all the transfers. First was Jimmy Mora. I showed you him. Basically, I got him and then set him for release. So he's no longer at the club. So ignore Jimmy. Jimmy out your mind. First off from the... Uh, I forgot what draft it was. I think it was the um, expansion draft. I got Chase Gasper, who fairly average left back. He is going to be back up. I think I showed you him earlier. Then it was Chris Muller, right mid, who, again, you've already seen, but I quite like the look of him. He hasn't been able to play many preseason games due to being injured. Then Justin Glad, who is an American centre half. I'm quite a big fan of his. I like the look of him. Got good stats and he's young and American, so positives there. So next up is Jovin Jones, left back, wing back, quite an attacking full back, really. Not expecting him to um, be too great defensively, but he looks like he could be a threat going forward. So that's why I got him in. Bit more of a, a wing back, I'd say. Then it was Steve Clark, who was also in the draft who I've got in, he's actually my backup keeper now, but he's got experience in the league and his stats are okay, not too bad. So they're the first ones from the draft and we're feeling okay about those ones, not too bad. George Costa is next, who I didn't sign, he was signed by um, already joining the club. He's a Florida-based um, lad, so it's nice to have, but he's not great. Mm, first touch is all right determination decisions not so bad 
Next up is, I'm quite happy with this one, Keaton Parks on loan from Benfica. He's only costing me 14k a month and looks like a decent centre mid, but mainly last year when he was at New York, he played 35 games, two goals and 12 assists. So he's got good pedigree in this league. He did very well last year and he's American. So I'd say he's probably my best signing for that reason. Obviously he's on loan, so maybe he's not my best signing. Next up was the players from the Super Draft, the college graduates. I showed you these guys as well, but we'll just have a quick refresh. Zach Scott, centre half. Lee Robertson, right back, who I've now sent on loan to Pittsburgh. Pittsburgh. Kieran Murray, attacking centre mid. Lewis Newton's that quick striker. So they're the four. You've already seen these guys. And then next up, you can see this list isn't very long, is it? You're already thinking, Matt, I'm I'm not sure you've got enough players in here. <laughs> Especially when one of them here, Josh Williams, I got in. But then I realised that I was over the salary cap, so I had to sacrifice someone. And he's been the sacrifice. I've had to let him go. Couldn't, uh, couldn't register him in the squad, so he's gone. Josh out your mind as well. No more Josh. Next up is, so you can see... These last three are panic buys. <laughs> um, 1 million, 800k, 1 million. Got to the stage where I was like, must have been like three quarters through preseason friendlies. Had no, not enough players. I'll, you'll see the results of those. But um, not enough players. So I needed to get some in. Rabinho is the first one in. Not the Rabinho, but he's not too bad. He's Brazilian. He. Plays as kind of centre mid, attacking midfielder right, attacking midfielder centre, a bit all over. He looks all right. He's solid across the board. I think he's not too bad. He's got. We see the coach. Um, the coach report there is quite high of him. So I, I like him. Yeah, he's he's okay. Next up is Jose Legazumon. It's going to be interesting to pronounce. Maybe just call him the Mon. Jose the Mon. 800k from Rosario Central. Centre half, 28. Again, not a bad player. Tackling 13, marking 12, but he's quite athletic. Not, not Doesn't lack much pace. Doesn't, I mean, he's fairly, fairly decent. Like, um, yeah, not much more really to say on him. He's only 5 foot 10. We've not got the biggest centre halves in the world. Last one is Ezequiel Bonacorso who is right back from Argentina. Looks decent, not had a chance to see him in any of the friendlies yet because he only signed after. Tackling 14, marking 13, not bad going forward either. 12s on the crossing and dribbling and fairly athletic. So yes, yeah, so that's it guys. That is all of the uh, players I've signed. Also let Christian McCune go because again, I couldn't afford his wages in the salary cap. I didn't realise he was on 23,000, a 19 year old. Crazy buy, really. Not by me, by Inter Miami before I came. So let's just have a look at the squad in all. Oh, God, it doesn't look good, does it? Yeah. So there's the 11. Then we've not got, we've not got many boys. If, we've already got a few injuries. Rubinho's out for two weeks. Justin Glad's out for two weeks, probably two of my better players. So yeah, it's going to be an interesting season. Oh, one second. One second. Did I miss someone? Didn't know this, but just up here, all transfers. We're missing a few players. I do have some more, don't worry. We've got to include the trades. So these are players who I've bought from other MLS sides. So the first one is Dom Dwyer from Orlando. I bought him for a million gener general allocation money. He's 29 years old, American. He's on a designated player contract, so a big contract. Well, he looks quite good. He's got work rate, finishing's good, bravery, quite athletic. He, I'm fairly optimistic about him. Didn't have a great season last year, but we'll see. We'll see how he goes. Uh, next up was... Berami, if you, you'll know Berami, he was at West Ham, 
Was it just West Ham? Oh no, Watford as well. Yeah, that was who I was thinking of. More recently, he's been around Europe a lot. As you can, he's looks good on this. Like stats are um, ball winning midfield. His mentals are incredible. Thirty four, so he is getting on a bit. Didn't have a bad season last year for the Colorado Rapids either. Seven point eight average rating, and I only picked him up. He's obviously on a designated contract as well. Uh, what am I doing here? I am going on trades. I only picked him up for 350,000. So I thought that was a bit of a steal. Next up is Logan Gudula, who I got for 40k. Like, nothing. I don't. I, he's just a 23 year old. He could play centre half and right back. I needed a bit of versatility and, and he needed to be American as well. So he's. <laughs> the coaches don't rate him. I don't really rate him, but he's. He's only there as backup. And then last but not least, my final signing for 1 million again from Minnesota is my first choice keeper, Ben Dick. Ben Dick. Don't laugh. We're, we're more mature than that in this channel. Handling 14, one on 1's 15, reflex is 15. He's played for Swope Park last year, who and not a top division side, so I don't think he's not he's not amazing either, but his stats look okay. And again, he needed to be American. So now this is the squad in all its glory. Oh, yeah. You as worried as I am? Mm hmm Especially when you see these friendlies. So first one we played Jacksonville Armada with a squad of Nothing really. One two one. They're I don't think they're a poor side. I think one of the college teams. Next up was Philadelphia Union lost two nil. Then Orlando lost three one. Dom Dwyer getting the goal for us. Nashville the other expansion team. So it's good to see how we kind of compared to them. Two two against them. So that's a bit promising. And we hadn't had a lot of our signings by then. You'll see. Playing Lee Robertson, Zach Scott, who were. College graduate players. So that made me feel a bit more promised. Then we played Tampa Bay, who are not a good side, and we lost 2-1. So that's the that's how we're kind of sitting. We've got Portland Timbers up next. I'm gonna play I'm gonna play this first Portland Timbers game. Um and then come back for New York City away and then Colorado Rapids at home. So that's how we're looking for the uh, the Inter Miami save currently. The squad is not really as good as I was hoping. So it's going to be interesting to see how how we get on this year. There's not as much pressure. And I didn't really get the players in who are kind of going to develop under us either. So it, I'm going to give my transfer window a rating out of a rating of D. Yeah, a rating of D. But anyway, guys. That's the end of the first episode. Thank you so much for watching and I'll see you next time.